All right, so I want to start examining what other people are saying about what life will be like after the return of Jesus Christ, after our resurrection. Okay, um, and I'm not sure exactly what key words to look for, so I'm just going to play around a little bit, find one, and then, and then talk about it. Here we got one from the 700 Club. So let's listen what these guys have to say. What happens to the earth after Jesus returns? I've heard something about a new heaven and earth. What can you tell me yeah. about that? Yeah. Well, well, if you had a Bible, you'd read that in Revelation 21. But okay. All right. Good question. I, I think God said, you know, he's going to make all things anew. And he said the earth is going to dissolve with fervent heat. Uh, and... Be Wait, hold on a second. Well, what's the question? What happens to the earth after Jesus returns? Okay, so when we read about the fervent heat in First Peter, whatever. Let me see if I can find it. Second Peter three. I'm always wrong. Okay, so um, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And of course, uh, we get this mention in verse 12, the you know mention of fervent heat, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And of course, we know uh, we can draw a parallel from that verse to Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, where it talks about, um, let's see, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. This is the same exact event, same exact and then um and so also you know obviously here in revelation 20 same exact event when it says and i saw a great white throne that's jesus coming in the clouds of heaven and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. All right. So, uh, you know, again, I mean, it's the same exact event. All right. Now, it's not complicated. It's really not. But this is actually what happens when Jesus returns. What I'm looking for is what happens after judgment day what happens to the earth after Jesus returns um, I've heard something okay so in my mind this is this is what Nancy is asking what happens after not when when he returns is when all that stuff happens the judgment day the great day of the Lord the earth is the earth is destroyed and there's a new heaven a new earth but okay God said you know, he's going to make all things anew, and he said the earth is going to dissolve with fervent heat, uh, and there'll be a new heaven, a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. God's going to create everything new, and the heavens, the, the earth is going to be new, but we also see the, a new Jerusalem coming down from heaven uh, onto the earth, a new Jerusalem, and uh, so we got a little bit of a mixed message, but just... Well, I don't know what's what's confusing about it. I don't know mixed message. What's he talking about? And I saw a new heaven and a new earth For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea and I John saw the holy city new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband 
Now, this is the same thing. A new earth with the holy city, New Jerusalem. This, I don't know what's mixed about this. We literally have these two mentions of a new earth and a holy city in the first two verses of Revelation 21. I don't how I don't know how you say this is a mixed message. That, that's uh, that's not complicated. This is simple stuff, fellas. It just boggles my mind. Why do everybody want to make this complicated? It's not rocket science. Man, come on. Behold, I make all things new. Alright, so Jesus says, Behold, <clears throat> I make all things new. Just please know there's going to be a fabulous new creation. And there's a lot in there about melting with fervent heat. And if the sun becomes a supernova oh, and all Sakes. of a sudden explodes, this earth is going to be bye-bye. Uh, <laughs> the sun is not going to explode. All right, That's hardly even relevant to the question, but the sun will not explode. Let's see here. Do we find... Right there it is. <laughs> it's still there. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. So the sun will still be there. The sun will still have light. And the moon will still have its light, or her light. But we won't need it. So... It, so <laughs> it doesn't make any sense why would you say the sun's going to explode uh, you know this, who cares no big deal the stars of heaven shall fall but the sun is not a star right so I, I don't know what's he talking about here bye bye and if that happens bye -bye. Uh, the scripture will be fulfilled very literally, okay? So who will be the people that will inhabit the new earth if, if everything gets well, blown up? Well, the, the, there'll be those of us who serve the Lord. Yeah. And uh, we, we'll, we'll be spiritual beings. We'll live in, in a new... <clears throat> spiritual beings? Okay. We'll actually be physical beings as well. Now... This is what I talked about yesterday when Jesus returned. See, this is pretty good stuff here. When Jesus returned, after he resurrected from the dead, ascended to heaven, he came back to witness. And in like Mark 16, verse 12, let's see. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. He appeared in another form, but he was still in the same form that we would. But the difference is he was in, his, in a resurrected body just like we will be in a resurrected body All right, and that's what I talked about yesterday or the last video whenever that was 1 Corinthians 15 for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality we will still be in our body we'll just have a new body a much better body where there is no more pain no more sorrow no more crying and no more death uh, I'll get more into that as we proceed in the study but we're not gonna be ghost we're not gonna be you know 
invisibles. <laughs> We're going to be literal bodies, literal people, literally walking about. Literally, okay. Spirit beings, that's okay. If you want to call spirit beings, that's fine. Where I take issue with is angels are not beings. All right. Um, oh, there's a great verse I was going to just came to my head here. Um, I'll have to get back to that. Angels are spirits. They are not beings, okay? They're not UFO aliens. They're not green little men. They're not beings. And so also are we um, not spirits only. All right? New, new heaven and new earth. Oh, and, you know, Jesus said to the thief on the cross, this day you'll be with me in paradise. So we may have some questions about soul sleep. And All right, so he just shifted the conversation. I don't want to get into that. Obviously... The, the thief on the cross his next his book is closed when his book is opened again and his name is found also in the Lamb's book of life and he shall be with us in paradise You want, I don't want to get into arguments about soul sleep and purgatory what's the Bible say man just read the Bible everybody seems to be trying to learn other people's doctrine rather than reading the Bible okay now there's one more thing I wanted to cover here I just wanted to go over that real quick and see what I might come up with but the, what I actually wanted to cover today might as well just put it in one video um, and that is the um, the language okay so first of all um, you know I want to go to Genesis 11 but let's go also to Zechariah or uh, Zephaniah somebody let's find out here uh, I don't even know where I'm going here where are we at What is that verse here? What is the verse here? Oh, there it is. 9, verse 9. Okay. For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. Now, keep that in mind in the resurrection. When we are in our new bodies, we will also have a new language, a pure language. Now, consider this, all right? So, way back when, after the flood, the whole earth was of one language and of one speech, okay? And they started to build this tower to heaven. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. All right. Now, this is parallel to what it will be like when we have one language, a pure language. Nothing will be restrained from us, which we imagine to do. All right? Now think about that. This is telling us, this is giving us a clue of what it will be like in the resurrection. After our transformation, if you will, of taking off mortality and putting on immortality in our new glorified bodies nothing will be restrained from us which we imagine to do all right um 
fascinating fascinating stuff the difference between then and the future is back then these all I mean even right now <laughs> we're all evil we're all none of us are righteous none of us are perfect not even close the day is coming when we will be perfect sinless and have everlasting life all right so this was not the case back then and because uh, be, because and it's still not the case but because they're um, full of sin that their imaginations although some do good some do evil and that evil will muddy the good if you will so if you um, progress this thing out you'll see exactly what's happening today but only happening very much very quickly all right and so it would happen so quickly that God would have to destroy it all all over again so to restrain them to limit them to slow them down God confounded their speech their language all right so that we can no longer understand one another's speech and that would sort of temper this um, Pro, you know progressive uh, you know progression toward corruption <laughs> if you will exactly what we're seeing today and just exactly what had happened before the flood and the whole reason why God destroyed the old world was because it was full of wickedness All right, real quickly let's go back there And just take a gander at it real quick and it says God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually so in chapter 11 we see now nothing will will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do so because of the wickedness that is in our heart this will this was going to only end up as quickly as it ended up in the old testament or before the flood i should say excuse me so god confounded the language to slow down that progression toward essentially the world that we're living in now all right and okay now once you've eliminated all the wickedness and evilness of the heart now it'll be okay now it'll be a very very good thing with no bad things attached to it I hope that makes sense right so everlasting life is great if there is no sin imagine everlasting life and also sin that would just be very bad very 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 bad if we still sinned and we had to suffer pain and suffering and and evilness and wickedness forever and all eternity that would stink but that's not the way it's going to be that's not the way it is all right thank god for that in the life to come it is there's going to be nothing but good that's the promise of our Lord Jesus Christ who will make all things new all right and so I just wanted to go over that um, all the languages that are spoken today they will be done away with all right that original language that was done away with God confounded that language so that they can no longer understand one another all right and then I wonder if this would help somebody to understand this. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 8 Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. 
all right and this is all the way until the end of the world so all these languages that are spoken today they will be done away we won't be speaking English in the life to come all right we will be given a new language a pure language all right pretty simple stuff I hope and I just wanted to point that out that hey there was a time when the whole world was spoken language and there was nothing restraining them from doing what they imagine to do so also will be the case in the life to come after our resurrection the biggest difference though we won't have that evilness and wickedness in our heart okay easy enough